Thanks for staying with us. Amidst economic hardship, the federal government has come under fire for its recent decision to subsidize the 2024 Hajj with, wait for it, 90 billion, billion naira. Despite allocating only 50 billion naira for the student loan scheme mm. of oh, the 2024 God. budget, according to reports, the present subsidy is a horse of another color because the intervention is not outright sponsorship but a rescue mission. What are your thoughts on this? Let me add a bit to that. Rescue mission. Despite the infrastructural, Deficit. no, the the um, the funding mm. that Minister Adelabu of Minister of Power said he needs, he needs liquidity mm. to fix the infrastructure mm. for power sector so that people like Bande at least <laughs> we have we can have the electricity because now they are the ones suffering. People the, have electricity the, to pay, pay the pain. Up. We are paying cost-reflective tariff. <laughs> so this money you are looking for, 90 billion couldn't have helped. No, it's mm. for Hajj. It had to help. Well, what are your thoughts? Because maybe we don't know what we're saying. It's mm. possible that we, there are some areas that, um, in governance that the little bit of you are totally oblivious to. So maybe mm. you can call us on the zero exactly. number, and the numbers on your screen. So explain to us and give us better understanding. 081. 0764-1679-090241-63440. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweet. So it doesn't look like I'm talking from two sides of my mouth because last week also we acknowledged mm. that politics is, is local. Yeah. There's certain things that people say they want or they need and you must address and give them that. Even though you might know better that something else is better, but you must also understand and consider what they are recording, because if you don't do that, there's a likelihood that you will not come back. Even the Senator Ondume alluded to that in his, in his statement. So there's two sides. It's either you do, it's a catch-22 situation. Either you do, if, they, if you don't do, it's a problem. If you do, it's a problem. Which way do you go? So that's the conversation I, I, we're having this morning. This is a purely religious exercise. Hmm? Let us remember, the, the decision to go to Hajj Yes. It's a purely religious exercise. The last I checked, Nigeria is not a religion. Like, we don't, we're not a one religion country. country yeah. I also mm -hmm. note, let me, let me just put the facts out there. The Hajj fees were determined last year. People were told how much to pay. The exchange rate was, at the time, pegged at 897 um, naira to a dollar. And it was 4.9 million per pilgrim. And it was based on this that the cost was given. Suddenly, right now, the price had jacked up by 1.9 million naira per person. <clears throat> and it is the difference of that 1.9 million naira that the government covered for all of those who have indicated. That's why they said it was a rescue mission, because people had already paid. They are going to Hajj, but the price had gone up. So the price, the forex so wait, prices... So, wait for, talk about so 90 billion is just... From that 1.82, mm. that means the real figure. Yes, the, 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 the commission real figure needs is 230 billion to sort out the fair differential cost by the forex. Mm. 90 billion is not very out of the 200. So this is money. The way they sell us religion, hey. and we buy it without understanding your pocket. Said carefully. No, 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 no. Religion no. is a very sensitive matter. Because I, I have on both sides. Christianity both and sides. Mm. People would take, people would sell their cars, sell their house, and take it to church because this is what I've been told. Without <coughs> understanding the reality, then government itself will now join. So if individual decides that I'm going to use everything I have in my lifetime to go to Hajj, but the government understanding the full scope of what their core responsibilities are, should not also fall into that same line. Mm. So I'm of the, Nima has educated me on this matter, and um, I hope Nima is watching so she can call if I'm wrong. She, she had told me that the reason she hasn't gone on, even though she had been offered, was because according to the Islamic tenets that she quoted to me, was that you, it is what, when you can afford, afford, you are supposed to sponsor yourself, or maybe your direct family member sponsors you on ad. If I'm wrong, go up, come on YouTube and comment if you think that, okay. but that's gets, the, if, if that is the statement, mm, mm. that it is something you do out of the volition of, I can afford it, I pay for my mother, my father, <coughs> my spouse, why is government getting involved in paying this? And they've been doing it, it's become a culture. No, it has always been. It's, it's, been. it's become okay, a culture. Let me, let me come to the other ladies. It doesn't mean it's right, mm. and not today. This is not the right time to do it. 
Miriam, your thoughts on this? What? We should say what Tope has said, what we have yes. said before we just repeat ourselves. is wrong. <laughs> the way you introduced it shows, you know, how we feel about it. We're confused. And right now, at this point, I think what I would suggest is a referendum. Mm -hmm. Let's find out, because a lot of these conversations I've had, uh, we blame government for, you know, participating in That's this way. Involved, yeah. But then they are <coughs> participating for the people of Nigeria. So they are, they are a group of Nigerians that expect that government should do this. So mm. I, I would like to ask those Nigerians how they feel about it, knowing that 90 billion is going to be taken out of our treasury to fund just their trip back and forth for pilgrimage. Meanwhile, from the same states that they are from, um, that they are from. We have schools, we have dilapidated schools, yeah. we have out of school children, we have, um, we do not have enough health facilities, um, 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 dilapidated um, health facility uh, infrastructure. There are just so many problems, insecurity, where we're, where we're looking for more funds to, um, so that we can ha have more security personnel, better security mm -hmm. in our schools. And I'm thinking if they were asked to come to a table and make the choice, between this 90 billion for their trip and 90 billion to be put into these issues that I've just mentioned, which would they have taken? Mm. Were they given that option? Were they told that it's from the same pocket or that money that we need for all these things that we're crying about, that's from the same pot that we have to use to fund you? I'm not absorbing government in any way because for me, uh, even though the people want something, the reason we also have a government, government of people with experience, people with um, education and exposure, you know, and we believe that they have um, to a level that most of us do not have. I expect that there's a conversation <coughs> on how to educate and enlighten our people mm. if they are not sure, if they, if they don't know the impact mm. of what it is that they're asking for. I'm tired of talking about this topic. Yeah. We have talked about it many times and yeah, we just know that it's... Different ways. Yes, it's, it, okay. it does not make you sense. See, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so... I was in Kigali over the weekend, mm. and one of the you conversations I had uh, with some of the taxi drivers that took us around was the fact that um, their president had done about 23 years, and they are still going to vote him again. And I asked the question, why? And they said, because he brought about the development, and they started listing everything. Mm -hmm. In fact, every individual in Kigali can point to this area and say, this is what the government is planning for this place. This is what the government is doing for this place. This is what the government is doing for us. And they said they, don't, they are not sure that if they vote somebody else in, the person may be able to continue on the path of development. The fear of going back to where they were coming from was what was pushing them. And they said, this man has proven himself to work for the greater good of the country. Mm -hmm. Now, why am I bringing this? We have politicians in this part of the world who want to give people what they think the people need so that they can come back. As a leader, it's not about giving the people what they need. It's about giving the people what is best for them. It's like a child at the age of 14 saying, my birthday is coming. Daddy, I know you have money. You are buying me a car. And you know that the car is not best for the child at the time. You say, ah, so that I, I will be the best daddy in the world. And then you buy a car and give to the child who will go and drive and kill himself or kill herself. You don't do that. You explain, break it down and say, this is for the greater good of the people. And when I asked myself, when I saw this, I was like, what is the priority of Nigeria? Do we have a vision? Because I do not understand the correlation between religious activities with government. It should not even, the conversation should not be together. You're a private individual, you're a, a public individual, you want to go for your um, a spiritual or a religious exercise outside the country, fund it. The way you go for your holidays and you fund it, fund your spirituality, fund your religion. Why is government involved when we also have a lot of things that we have not paid attention to? Look at the decadence in our medical care. Just look at it. You mentioned the schools. Go to some of the schools. They don't have roof. They don't have good toilets. Some are still under the trees. In 2024, reading in a country as big as Nigeria. As Kigali, blessed. again, they don't have any resources, though. Nothing. They don't even have water. They want to do artificial lake in the next how many years. They don't have nothing. But, they, but we have the potential. The house, everything they need. It's organized. You don't need to import. One of the things that their it president produces. has said is that by before the end of how many years, every Kigalian will be living in a flat. They want to raise down all those, their small, small huts in the mm. old year shanty and raise it up and then give, make it affordable for... I'm and sure they don't spend 90 man, billion on it. Like, like, it's a taxi Still man image. that is what, telling me what, all what of the this. Agilu. No, wait now, wait. Let me, let me not so wait. I won't wait. I won't wait. Let me tell you I won't wait. 
Because this is the same Priority. Nigeria. This is the same Nigeria where Obasanjo wanted to do a third time and we all revolted. Mm -hmm. Because it's possible that Obasanjo could have been. Um, yeah. It could, could have, could have uh, taken uh, us to that um, point. Um, because, um, because the truth um, is, um, what's, what's, what's that his name? Don't the, start you see, no. back. Me, thank you. Mm. Because the truth is, I don't, I'm not a Abbasanjo fan. I'm, yeah, I exactly. personally not. So but the truth is. is, this man said it then. That yeah. the way Nigeria is right now, mm. we need time to fix it. Eight years is not enough. Give me an extra term. Mm. I need more terms. Because if he had, is it possible that Nigeria would not be where it is So today? let's not... That's not the conversation. That's not the so conversation. That's not the conversation. conversation but from I'm the trying back, to pay, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to pay, I'm, I'm trying to let Nigerians know that we are also our own enemies. Because, because if we, if Paul Pigami was our own president, he would not be successful. No, 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 no. no, no. Don't okay. say that. Don't, 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 say that don't be sure. You only use it as an I'm example. That's not what you not, say. No, hold on. Not That's why I said do not take the conversation from the back okay. so that we don't miss, uh, 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 the miss the crux of mm. the matter. The yeah. crux of the matter is you get into power and you look around and see the problems of the country and you decide that, I'm sorry, you people have power. enjoyed this... Uh, corruption. Uh, corru corruption, this trip, this religious trip, yeah. we funded okay, okay. you for a long time. But this right now, this administration will not do this. Because of, wait, oh, because of what we are going through. Mm. Minimum wage, we are still quarreling. Our mm. people that are collecting 30,000, what is 30,000 naira for a full blown married man with children okay, to survive? From here. Okay, because help me. the pilgrim people yes. are getting 500,000 naira subsidy. That's what they are doing for them. It's not like it's um, they, they didn't cover the entire bill. Mm. So yeah. they are they are paid their own personal money. Yes, yes. yes. is the so difference. Yes, each, it should not cost no, each of them. They said each of the pilgrims will be getting five hundred thousand naira each, and yet labor is asking Three, you for six six hundred and fifteen thousand. And give them. And so me, when I was traveling to my own Kigali, did the Who government support you? me? Oh. I went for a personal retreat. I went to pray. On the mountain of my God. Oh, Pray to, for it, Nigeria. For Nigeria matter. In the mountains what of I'm Kigali. Is, how come a few people are getting the advantage? Yeah. And mm. eight people are made to pay cost reflective because they look like they can Bad afford down. it. If a man can afford four million naira, mm. he can afford that 1.9. Thank ah. you. Ah. Yes. Why would you subsidize Please. for the rich? At the detriment of, of the, the poor. poor. Because okay. giving 500,000 naira to somebody that can afford 4 million naira is you dashing a rich man money in a poor country. Yes. Mm. Not a wise decision. Let give me, me five. Oh, give me five. Because that, is, here now. that is worthy of assimilation. We're still discussing this 90 billion naira <coughs> money mm. that the federal government has allocated to pilgrims uh, recently. Mm. And the angle that I was saying that we are yet to talk, touch on is this issue of forex. Mm. We are all saying that. Mm. We, you know, I always, I always complain that we all just travel, carry our kids abroad. You know, but the truth is that the fact that you are even going to buy money mm -hmm. from an international airline, yeah. you're going to pay for housing, I mean, accommodation yeah. in a foreign land, all the stuff, all the money you're going to take, we need to get dollars for it. Mm -hmm. This is part of the problem. If a government is therefore willing to sacrifice 90 billion naira mm. to convert, obviously, to Forex, USD, yeah. that's a problem. It it's is. A problem. So you're saying on one hand, you're saying renewed hope. On one hand, you say, I remove, I remove subsidy. Mm -hmm. On one hand, you say, please tighten your belt. On the other hand, you are giving 90 billion naira to some people to say, okay, well, you have to go and do it. Let me, let me help you um, to let me rescue you for 1.9 yeah. million uh, difference oh, uh, and give you for pilgrim to go and get forex. Yeah. Makes and no that's, sense because yeah. it's like saying renewed subsidy as far as I'm concerned in this case. Because, oh. why, yes. The different version of subsidy. Why, why, why are we cutting from one place mm. to put in another? Peter you to you know, why are we stopping some people, asking them to tighten their belt, and then we put it in another area where it's just to travel. Why is government, you know, the CBN, so in, willing to be involved in this? What was the conversation <coughs> with, you know, the presidency, the CBN, about this amount that was supposed to be taken out to fund these people? Was the, president well, those mean, yes, was the, the presidency advised? Don't we know what the impact of this will be on our, on, our, on our economy, on our Naira? That's why I said I don't like to talk about this, because we know the questions, we know the shortfalls, we, we know, know the, the issues. So what are we doing? The only way, you know, government can sort of absorb itself is to say this is what the people want. Mm -hmm. They are insisting on it. Without it, we will not be able to do other things in the, in the economy or develop better things in the economy. I don't think so. People. I believe that if we engage people and let them understand what it is that they are doing or asking for, it will be different. What is it about, okay, let's talk about these countries that will go to for pilgrimage, Israel and Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. Why can't they give us subsidy? After all, we go to their country. Mm -hmm. Promote in large numbers. Mm -hmm. And we help their economy when we get there. 
How can, why don't they say to us, oh, we see that you are struggling this way. Because of this, we're going to subsidize airfares for you. We're going to subsidize accommodation because we need the Nigerian prayers. If, we need the Nigerian group. Yeah. Every time you come, it makes a difference in the heavenly realms, you know? Or it makes a difference in yeah. our economy. Why don't we have those sort of creative conversations mm. instead of furthering, <coughs> diminishing our, the value of yeah. our Naira? I don't. If they give, give, if they give uh, 90 billion to Oyama, the air peace guy. Yeah. Okay, no, let me, let me get Oyama. Mm. Let me give you 90 billion Naira. Get more uh, uh, airlines mm. across. Mm. What's that? That's helping our own economy. Yeah, you know, give, give, that yeah. one is, 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 is even a businessman. He can't. I'm just saying that. No, no, keep no. the money within we Nigeria. Mm. Why are you giving this money outside? Yes, don't even give this money in this case. That's what we're saying. We have issues we need to solve here. Um, in you know, conclusion of my earlier analysis, right? In while I was doing a comparison, if the poor man cannot feel the impact of your administration, if you like, spend 20 years spent 30 years ruling or leading, you have failed. What makes your leadership stand out is the fact that the man on the street can feel the impact of your administration. The man on the street can have the basic amenities, the basic, like, life will have value and meaning because the man is not struggling to eat, he's not struggling for healthcare, he's not struggling to educate the children, he's not struggling on those levels. Once Every individual who is poor in this country cannot feel the impact of the administration. If you like, do because you want to come back. You have failed. And posterity will hold you to it. And that's why we have a difference when you go to other countries and you see how contented the people are. We are not contented here because we are struggling for everything. And we watch. You are complaining about young people who are getting into crime. They are watching. 90 billion, go for this one. This one, go for that one. That one, go for that one. They have to find a way for themselves. Because that same young man would have a poor mother at home who cannot get medical care and may die of malaria because they are not able to see common malaria drug. What do you tell them? Tomorrow we say we need to, we need to you blame the middle class. Let me take this, uh, let me take this call. Good morning, you're live. <laughs> say it's middle class. Good morning, you're live. Go ahead, please. Good morning. Morning. We can hear you, Kubura. Okay, okay. Uh, please, please, this is what you advise the government. That this is not our priority now. We have to spend money. So if you know you don't have the money to go to Vatican, please stay in your house. It's not our priority now. We have so many people here, my time. Why did you, why did you treat him us like this? I think we don't, I think we don't even have common sense in this country. Why are they treating us as if we are told that they're dead? We talk here. They should praise those who don't have the money to go to Mecca. They should sit in their house. They should build their home. They should forget about the Mecca for now. For heaven's sake. Oh. Okay. You see, going back to what I said last week, because like I said I don't want to side talk with two sides of my mouth. I do agree that politics is local. I do agree that people have their own peculiar needs. We've heard also from the ladies that, yes, as a leader, you should want to see above and beyond. Yeah. Have a vision. But sometimes you can have a vision. You want to build a school in the village that they're not interested. All they want is to learn maybe their Bible. They want to just, they, want, they are okay. Because there are some villages around the world, in Indonesia, in Malaysia, where they are fine. They are fishermen. They are, their kids are raised to fish. And they don't need all your extra amenities. The only is that when I'm ill, we have herbs that we to heal ourselves. We have where we are educating our children. Abandoned so attacking their villages. I'm saying that. Are they kidnapping their the wives point, and their children? The point I'm trying <laughs> to make, Miriam, hear my point. Okay. Politics, governance sometimes is local, such that people, people, people have a specific need. So if a community say my own need mm. is to go to Hajj, all I want, the only thing I am concerned about as a, as a Nigerian citizen is that the government can support me because that Hajj is the most important thing for me and my entire community. And I say, okay, that is the only way I can get these people. So you don't need the Hajj, but somebody else does need the Hajj. If I, so were, the government, if I were the government, if I were the government, this, you will write your name down as a member of a community saying that this is what you prefer to the issues on ground because yes. we read what is happening in the local mm. communities. Yes. They tell us they, they have come and taken over our community. Mm. We are paying taxes to bandits, mm -hmm. to warlords, mm -hmm. and children have been fans. kidnapped from schools. And you and you're from that same community. You want to go. Uh, uh, you for want Hajj. to go for whatever pilgrimage, whether Hajj or um, Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Jerusalem yeah. You will write your name. Let the people mm -hmm. in your community no, know that, you, that this is but, what but you're already... asking for because it does not make sense, right? That the sort of issues we're dealing with. See, if it was a time of boom, where mm, things were okay, money you understand, we'll get 
this is something that the government may get away with it mm. with. They and we'll say, okay, this is it. this is government's way of sort of, you know, making people enjoy even more of the largesse mm -hmm. that the country is enjoying. But we are in a serious situation. Yeah. We're not talking of just the exchange rates. Yeah. We're talking of the criminality in, in all forms. Yeah. We're talking about war against drug abuse. Ah. We're talking about the, the, the bandits, the warlords, constantly community clashes. And every time we have these conversations, we hear them say we do not have enough funds. Mm. We, we can't cover security is, mm. is, is, is porous because we don't have enough funds to train more people, to employ more people. We don't have enough funds in our hospitals. That's why we don't yeah. have doctors. Our doctors are leaving. So if you have these issues, how is Hajj the thing that you oh, believe that your is, the local community is asking for? You're not listening to the right people. I do uh -huh. not believe okay. that our president. Thank you. Let me pause you for a second. Talk. I want to get your point, but let me take this call. I've been holding for a minute. Good morning, you're live. Hello, good morning. Good morning, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, Ab Abdul Hamid. Hamid. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I'm calling from Antonio Adibati. I quite agree with your views over there. And I, in fact, I am 100% in agreement with every one of you there, especially in the case of the Pingali issue. But my question is this. Why is it that when it comes to Mecca, that you people normally raise eyebrows? Of recent, during December period, or Easter period, this state government, this is the state government, so they uh, sent some people to the Italy, and they were accepted. I had it on me. You people, you know, you had it there. Why is it that you don't complain there? Or is it only method that you normally subsidize? You know, you normally subsidize for uh, uh, Jerusalem also. Yeah. They normally subsidize for, for when it comes to culture. I think what we need to do is for us to be fair enough to ourselves. Let us be fair to ourselves and tell our government straight that anything that has to do with religion, yeah. anything that has to do with culture, they should, they should, they should hand over is the chance of, of it now. Let us save the economy, let us save the interest of the market. That is my point. Thank you very much, Abdul. You are absolutely opinion. correct. Thank you very much, Abdul Hamid. Doing, we absolutely criticize both for Jerusalem As and for well. Hajj. So maybe we, we should just stop saying Hajj. We should just religion. But and I have said, this is that Israel. We, we, even on this table, we are criticized. Even on this table, even this conversation, yeah, we right are criticized that both religion, yes. Christianity, and Islam. It's not yes. just, it's just because not. the vice president used his mouth to say 90 billion, billion for so, this part. Now, if we had seen that figure, during that time, it's possible ah, that we're we've discussed We have discussed, 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 discussed it. I know we have discussed it. I'm just saying that. We've discussed going to Jerusalem yes, with forces by the times. government on this show. Mm -hmm. We even no, mentioned no. it. The first thing I said was religion and religious practices. The government doesn't have any business in it. At all. Go. People hear what they want to yeah, hear. Yeah, on their and, filters. And, and, but, but we'll just Let me take a few comments. I'll come back to you. Oh, yes, you want to say something? Yes. Please, I was going to talk about the fact that our president has constantly displayed himself as a very courageous person. He's someone that is not scared of saying and saying it, that this is, we cannot continue like We're this. We're taking decisions. We, yeah. we, we will make the decision. Mm. So when Mariam said it, it was like she took the words from my mouth that he's, been get, he's getting wrong advice. You know, be, because you are as, you are, you, no matter how amazing you are as a leader, your lieutenants are extremely important. If people around you do not buy into, like Mariam, Mariam is always saying, do the people around the president understand what new hope means? Mm. Renewed hope. And yeah. I need, Eh? Renewed, renewed hope. Renewed, renewed hope. hope. And this renewed hope, are they willing to put in all that it takes to deliver the renewed hope? Mm. Because someone advised the president that it made sense for him to spend 90 billion and the Nigerians would, ac would, ac would accept it lying down or that there will not be backlash on him. That person on his own also needs to be dealt with because the person misled the president. Because right now is not the time for us to be having conversations like this. There are many more pressing, more important issues to discuss yeah. as a nation than to, for us to spend this very important Monday morning hmm. to be discussing how 90 billion is being hey. appropriated Shukuna, into Shukuna. minute things <laughs> such okay. as Hajj sub yeah. um, subsidy. Yeah. We, we cannot, it's not okay, I think I have a call call okay. Let's take a few comments. Jerusalem Let me take a few comments. There's somebody that sent it. Uh, I won't mention his name. He's a politician. <laughs> okay. He says, Mariah, good morning. Okay. Religion is a private matter. Gang -gang. Let governments remove its hands okay. from funding religion. Thank you. This is a misplacement of priority. I am okay. not happy with this. I won't mention your name. Because when you say politician, I was expecting a different... Know. Make you not get the trouble with your guys, but yes, let me just uh, yeah. keep your name. Let me name. take Go a few. Ahead. Fiona says, the 90 billion is for her. I have a caller. Can okay. I come to you? Hello, good morning. You're live. Good morning. Yes, sir. Emmanuel. Good morning. 
morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning. This is the first time caller. Well, welcome, welcome to, to the, the show. show. Uh, I think uh, when this government, when they were coming in, they said they have, they promised us the new code. They promised us the new code. But what we are seeing now, honestly, is far, far different from the new anything. <laughs> Not to billion to how many percentage of people. People are hungry. People go not go to school. I was driving out this morning, come and see crowd on the road, looking for buses. People couldn't afford two square meals anymore. There are some students that are not too strong, they are at home now. They are telling people to afford to feed. And this government are paying <coughs> the villages. That is wicked. Thank you. And Thank you very you. much. Let's take a few comments and we're going to yes. break. So Omar Shalewa says, um, it's not poor people that paid the previous fee. Poor people do not reason hard at all. It is mostly survival that concerns the poor man, transportation, education, health care, and food. And um, they said, to Niger says, how can a nation as poor as Nigeria subsidize religious trips more than the student loan of the university students? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, more, you know, um, messages here. But I wanted to just quickly say something. Um, we say these are the needs of the people. These are the needs of the people. Now, when we check those needs, we just oppose those needs to what the real people <laughs> really need, we see there's always a disparity. Yeah. So which caliber of people are we attending to right now? We need to separate it. So when we say needs of the people, the people need this, the people need that. Which caliber of people? Because we have seen now that the people have grade. We have the lower of the lower. We have the middle. We have the higher of the higher. And they are all people. But which needs are we attending to as an administration, as the government? Which needs should be on our priority list? Are we ignoring the law of the law because these people can even contribute a bit to what we want to achieve? And what's the end goal of this religious activity? What is the end goal in connection to our GDP? What is it going to bring to us as a nation? We are constantly helping the other nations to make money. They make money out of tourism. I remember a few times where a, a, a couple of um, friends went to Israel. They bought everything. They bought sand. They bought water. They bought oil. Everything on the soil. They, they sold to them. The people selling to them said they don't even believe in their Lord and their Savior, Jesus Christ. They're just using it to make money, making money for their country. And we, that we have not made money for our own country, we are constantly giving them because they sold something to us and everybody's rushing. Okay. So in asking government a question, this 90 billion now that you are sending away, how is it going to come back to us? Press down, shaking together I and running over that. to better our economy. Because if it's not coming back, then there's no need to spend. There's an article there. that I have here from Punch, actually. For May, it was in Gen um, January 2024, talking about the Nigerian Christian Pilgrim Commission, mm -hmm. saying that it would cost 3 million naira per pilgrim to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. the main, according to the head of the 2024 main pilgrimage to Rome and Greece, the Nigerian Christian Pilgrims Commission has released the cost. Uh, according to the statement by the... Um, the, I think the, 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 I'm trying to see the specific person that said that. So the amount covers return flight, hotel accommodation, three course meal per day, and tours of holy sites in both Rome and Greece. Wow. Executive luxury buses for six nights and seven days, stressing, however, the cost is not inclusive of pilgrims traveling allowance. The point is that, again, government has no subsidizing. Yes. Even pilgrims to Jerusalem, Greece, Rome. Yes. And we have no business doing this either. Let's go to a short break. When we come back, We'll continue. I'll take a few more calls and comments and then we'll wrap up. Stay with us. We'll Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. We're still discussing this matter. And I think I have a caller, Hamed from Abuja. You're live. Thanks for calling. Go ahead, please. Thank you, madam. Good morning. Hello, maybe. Good morning. Very Good clearly. Morning. We can hear you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Ahmed Jibun. I'm coming from Abuja, Nigeria. Uh, as a Muslim, uh, uh, the pilgrims, pilgrims, the pilgrims who were made to pay 4.5 million last year for pilgrimage to Holy Land. But this year, it is 9 million. So the federal government should be able to explain who did they subsidize, how much, how, how much, what is the subsidy did they do to pilgrims? Madam, they subsidize their pocket. There's nothing like subsidy for pilgrims. I know people from Abuja here that went on this pilgrimage and they pay from their noses. 
they paid as much as 9 million, 8 million, 8 point something million per pilgrim. So there's something like subsidy on the, I mean, to do, those that went on hard. They should not cause confusion between the Muslims and the Christians in this country. They should call, I mean, they should be able to tell the whole Nigerians the truth. It's a lie. There's something like Thank 90 you know billion subsidy for pilgrims in Nigeria. Sorry, please. Thank you very much. You know, this, this issue of pilgrimage is an Islamic thing. No? Mm. I don't know when Christians started going to pilgrimage. <laughs> when I was growing up, yeah, it, it, was was a, it was an Islamic induction for you to die. It's required of you as a Muslim to go on a pilgrimage. But Christians, you have no business. If you want to go to Rome or go to um, uh, Greece, it is your own personal choice. It's not required <laughs> by your religion. So to the point where you as Christian are now saying, I just want to go on a pilgrimage. Well, whose business is it that you're going on a pilgrimage? That's number one. Number two, at what point the government said, you Christian that are going, I will also support you. On what basis? So, so Mariah, it was, you know, this spirit of fairness, because by religious ethics, like it's in their hadith or something. I think, yeah, I think yes. it's, for, Nima is not for here. Mus, for Muslims yes. to go on pilgrimage. It is not in the Bible for Christians uh, exactly. to go on pilgrimage. But when government was paying for Muslim pilgrimage, the Christians in politics too now said, uh -uh, uh -uh. how come we only a group of people are the we ones know going? Which we know which one started too. first. We are going to go Muslims. on pilgrimage. Islam okay. is in the is it's in, in, the, it's in the Bible. No, 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 I understand. Mm. I'm saying the funding of pilgrimage, do we know which started first? We don't know. We don't know. So we need to be sure. we are. If we are if wrong, we they can come and correct yes, us. Yes, either way, correct us or... Either way, the point I was trying to make earlier, follow, follow. was that it was just Christians, but there should never be a commission for Christians pilgrimage mm. in the first yeah. place because yeah. it's not our own, so you know, it's and, not required. So it, 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 it wouldn't have been a commission for that if there government was, no was not subsidizing for, for the other, for the other yeah. people. Okay, we don't, because we're all Nigerians. I say that Kola made a point, which is a problem that we... We suffered with subsidy on petroleum. Yeah. That one of the reasons we wanted to shut it down is the corruption that happens under the cover of subsidy. And um, we have players who remember now the story of the subsidy then was there was a cartel or a caucus that have found a way to get money from government from that subsidy into their pockets that they did not deserve. Yeah. And so this caller is saying that government should also look Corruption, yeah. Into it because there are many people that are going for this pilgrimage and they don't who get have not been subsidized, yeah. and so they are shocked at the amount that is being touted yeah. as what is used to yeah. subsidize their yeah. um, travel. So that's it's a serious corruption issue. Yeah, that's another allegation. Yes. Let me take um, Shola from Akute. Thanks for calling your live. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed that. Now let me, let me, let me. There's a paper that was written. It was a research paper. I'm trying to get the name of the person. I think it's Tewashid Graybell. And he did a research paper talking about religious pilgrimages have had um, great national significance in Nigeria, where he was actually complaining the fact that government was the impact of the, the socio-economical impact of sponsoring Muslim and Christian pilgrims to, uh, okay. to our economy. Mm. And he said that he recommended, based on this research paper, that faith is personal mm. and should be treated as such by political authorities. The privatization of matters relating to religious pilgrimage <laughs> will have positive impact implications for the anti-corruption war, promote peace, harmony, mm -hmm. and development. Privatization means that it's a private trip. It's mm -hmm. not a public, it's not something for the government to do. Mm -hmm. So he, a research paper has been done on all the years. Nigeria yeah. has sponsored pilgrimage. And he's saying that, listen, it doesn't make any sense. Religion itself is private. Yeah. And government has to take a drastic decision yeah. to cut off any influence in or religion or yeah. involvement in religion. in religion. So Wikipedia says pilgrimage is a journey to a holy place which can lead to a personal transformation after which the pilgrim returns to their daily life. And they're supposed to return with, you know, some of the things they've gotten there and live a holy life going forward. Now, there's a, a message here that says, um, I thought they said heavenly race and salvation is personal. Why is government aiding some people? And, um, you know, um, Fiona says, uh, the, is, this is not a religious uh, matter. The point here is that it's not needed for the time. We have more important things to do with money. Uh, Kiki Digital says, I'm a Christian and I see going to Jerusalem like going for excursion. If you can't afford it, please don't stress the economy and citizens of Nigeria of their resources. And that's where my point comes in. Um, this is taxpayers' money going for your personal uh, whims and your personal uh, convictions, which is not supposed to be um, you know, a business of the people who are paying the taxes. The people who pay these taxes need the taxes to be used for the betterment of 
the, the, the states and the federal uh, you know, uh, government in infrastructures. They want to see their money working for them. Now, when we cut out from the money that's supposed to work for the people so that they can have a semblance of the basics of life, and we're using it to fund some of these things that mean nothing to our economy, mean nothing to our development, we are therefore cheating the people who are paying their taxes. Yeah. And yeah. I think this is a call to all the lawmakers that they need to come out and say, the people now, the people that, I don't know the people that are clamoring for the pilgrimages, but the real people who need these things to reflect in their lives are saying that this is not what we want. This is not a priority. I would ask and you know, see how this can be recalled to say, from now going forward, we're not going to be doing this again yeah. because this is not what the people yeah. need. And it's not part of the Renewed Hope agenda. <laughs> Let me take this call from Henry. He's calling from Dublin. Henry, you're live. Hello, Go ahead, uh, please. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> yeah, good morning. Good morning, ladies. Yes. See, uh, what I want to say is this. Uh, you know, uh, being a president of a country, is, you don't just wake up one morning and change what has been there for, 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 years. for, for years. You know, uh, yes, this, this president has been, they've been praying for it, even right in the military. So, uh, yes, uh, uh, there's a valid point that uh, Nigeria is at the moment because of the economic uh, uh, issues going on. But you don't expect the president to just sign an executive order to end what has been in existence for years. There would be a, there be a, class, there be a, 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 a flashback, a, a flashback among the people who have been benefiting from this. So, yes, it's a good conversation. We should have that conversation. And people should not expect it to be done overnight and just close right. it. Okay, then the second point I want to make is the civil servants. The civil servants are part, will be part of this as well because this, whenever you hear this subsidy, money going in, it is the parastatal, the directors, and this is, they need to look into that. And the point is this, anybody expecting President Ahmed Bolas will be to just wake up one money and end money for hard, subsidy for hard, it's not going to work. It's a conversation right. and they will look into it. Probably they might do something. Thanks. Thank you very much, Henry. Let's go on a short break now. We come back to continue with our show. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.